Hello, what's up everybody? Uh, it's me, Sean Astrum. Um, today, I wanted to show you guys uh, my new computer. Uh, I recently built a new machine that is running uh, AMD's new 32 core chip. It's called the uh, 2990WX. And uh, this thing is a, a monster, especially with Corona Render, my favorite render engine, uh, for, for those of you who didn't know that. Um, but anyway, Another big announcement, if you guys head on over to coronarender.com forward slash blog, you can see here, you can download the latest beta 2 release candidate 1 right here from the blog. And uh, that is pretty sweet because they've been working on a lot of cool stuff, uh, uh, one of which being the uh, Corona node material system. They got a scene converter, uh, and now they fully support Cinema 4D's hair, which is really exciting. Now, uh, for those of you who may or may not know, Corona Render is a CPU-based render engine, and that's why I got this monster 32-core chip. And you will see here shortly that uh, it is extremely fast with Corona Render. And uh, yeah, so, and uh, yeah, guys, if you guys haven't been keeping an eye on Corona, you should definitely head on over to their main website here, coronarender.com, and look at the gallery. You see some of the images that people are creating with this render engine. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous in terms of render quality. Now, not to say that uh, Arnold or Redshift or Octane or any of these other engines can't do these things, um, but for Corona, it's just, it's it seems like it's just easier to get photoreal renderings out of it. It's just uh, less work, um, if, if, if you could say such a thing when it comes to 3D art. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of their philosophy too a little bit is stripping away a lot of the complexities of setting up shaders, setting up lighting, setting up GI, all that stuff. So anyway, uh, I'm going to hop into cinema here. I got a little scene. Uh, it's literally just a core nail box, very simple. Um, and I'm going to dive into the render settings here. And if you look here, super basic. Well, one thing I always change, and you guys may have noticed, seen this in my other tutorials is I set the interactive rendering passes to 20. That way the interactive rendering um, window is not continuing to render and render and render and get finer and finer because then you're just kind of um, burning up your CPU uh, when you don't need to do that. But yeah, so uh, anyway, here's this scene. Got some simple Corona materials and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna fire up the IPR here and we'll, we'll see how quick this is. Um, so as you can see, it's uh, rendering and oh, it's already done actually to, to 20 samples. A little bit of noise in there, um, but this is a Cornell box, full GI, bouncing around. I got a glass sphere in here, and I got this little figure. Um, but if I go into the settings here, and let's just crank up these um, interactive passes to like 50, let's say, and then let's go to general settings and turn on our um, to denoising. If we set this to full denoising, and then actually I'm going to set the uh, interactive settings to or render passes to 25. Oh, it's actually been rendering in the background there. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to fire this back up and let's just see what we get here. So it's rendering, rendering. Oh, it already got 25 and that's that. Now, if we want to run the denoiser, we have to run it in the um, picture viewer, if I'm not mistaken. And so it's rendering, rendering, rendering. And um, oh, that this one I haven't changed the setting, but if I stop this, um, yeah, 11 seconds with full denoising. Now that resolution is pretty low, so let me actually crank this up to 960, something like that. So let's go to general settings, pass limit 25, we'll render again. Um, but yeah, guys, I really just want to show you how freaking fast this render engine is with um, AMD's new Ryzen Threadripper. Such a, such a silly name, but that's what it's called and it's the 2990WX 32 core processor. And I currently have mine running at 3.7 gigahertz. You can actually overclock these. And um, oh yeah, so here we are, 15 seconds, um, completely noise free. Uh, we're getting some caustics here and my little figure here. Granted, this is not a complex scene, but um, for those of you who are familiar with 3D rendering, this is fast. This is incredibly fast for a scene like this. Now, if I hop over here, I got a couple other scenes prepared here. I have this little rover here that's from um, my HDRI Alien Skies pack. If you just head on over to my site here, you can see these guys here. Um, 
This is a my Alien Sky Pack. Uh, it's very exciting. Um, but these are these are 14K HDRIs that I've created. And um, yeah, so I, I pulled up that scene. I stripped out a couple things just to kind of um, make it nice and speedy here. Um, but if I also hop into my render settings and just double check the um, performance settings, let's do max passes 25 here as well. And there we'll go 50, even though we're not going to probably be doing final render. This is cool. This is cool. Um, so yeah, I just fired up the IPR again, and it's sw switching over to this scene, um, preparing scene data. And this model is a little more complex, and not to mention we have loaded in a um, 14K HDRI map. But you can see here, um, basically getting uh, noise-free feedback within seconds. I mean, this is like, whoop, I want to do some... I want to check this material out here that I've been working on up and close here, so we'll let that resolve. Oh, that looks good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna brighten up my HDRI here. Let's set the intensity to two. Um, let's see what that looks like. Oh, okay, that looks good. I like that. Cool, done. Project's done. I'm gonna send it to my client now, and um, they're gonna be happy. Uh, actually, you know what? They like this other sky, so let me throw that on there. Now, everybody knows that Redshift and Octane are just as fast, if not way faster than this in many cases, but this engine has no limitations um, of GPU rendering. So all of the procedural shaders and built-in Cinema 4D shaders are supported um, by Corona, which is awesome, especially for, for those of you who have been using Cinema 4D for a long time. You like the built-in shaders, uh, such as myself. Here, I, I started working on this little rock scene. I was gonna try and do something here. Um, but yeah, so I got this little rock model here. I started to kind of build a little rock model. It's like an outer space diamond rock thing. But I just wanna show you guys how quickly I could maybe build a quick um, procedural rock shader. So if I wanted to, I could pull up the Corona's own material node system. Now you have to bear with me guys because I haven't actually used this very much. Um, but if I go in here to new, uh, what do I want, new shader, um, something they just added is um, full support for the for the layer shader. So I can plug this sucker into the diffuse channel and then I could go up here, go uh, noise. And now guys, remember these are Cinema 4D's built in shaders and they work 100% with Corona. And that is freaking awesome. So if I just go here to noise and I pull up a Luca shader, one of my faves, definitely one of my faves. Um, sorry, I'm trying to see how long I've been recording here. Definitely had way too much coffee today. Uh, but if I go in here, let's just make this a brown color real quick. And guys, I'm not gonna get too fancy with this because it's really just more of a demo um, showing how fast Corona can be on a state-of-the-art processor and also how easy it can be to use. Um, so that's cool. So I'm gonna, um, let's bring in one more noise and we'll layer this up. We'll just put it in here. Now, if we, if we click the actual layer shader, you can see we, it's just stacked just as, as if you would inside of Cinema native, natively. Um, this is R20. I barely scratched the surface with uh, the new node system that comes with R20, but this is a separate node system um, developed by the guys at Corona. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, let's do displaced turbulence on this guy. Crank it up here. And you know what, I'm not gonna worry about coloring this. I'm just gonna go to the layer shader and set this to multiply or something like that. Um, and maybe we'll do overlay. And actually, let's add some color in here. Let's add a little red, a little reddish, something like that. And uh, sure, whatever. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. Very subtle, very subtle, but not that big a deal. You can always right click and open these windows up if you wanna get a better preview of what's going on here. I love that feature. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people will use that. So here's my pretty bad rock material. Um, but if I throw it in here, oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. We're already getting immediate feedback in the IPR. Um, and I can just uh, scale up. Well, let's change my seed, crank up the octaves, scale this up. Okay, that's looking cool. Now, let's say uh, I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go to displacement. We'll turn that on, and let's hop back into the node editor, 
and let's just create a um, colorize shader. This would be comparable to like the ramp shader inside of uh, Arnold or uh, yeah, any other engine that has a, a ramp feature. Same thing here. And we'll plug this into the displacement. So now we have this same noise used for the color and the displacement. So if I change the seed value here, that's going to update through there. And we're getting some weird yellow thing here. So if I refresh the IPR, we should get a nice update. Now, remember, folks, it's still in beta, but it's coming soon. Um, so anyway, there's an amazing rock material. It's absolutely stunning. But uh, the beautiful thing about it, guys, is it's procedural. It, there's no seams, no UVing required uh, for a shader like this. And um, yeah, it just uh, works. So if I were to also go into the displacement settings, let's go minus 10, do kind of a negative thing here. Now with the displacement, you do have to kind of update the IPR um, for it to kind of recalculate there. So that looks kind of cool. And then let me do minus 20 and we'll refresh that again. And that's looking cool. And I'm gonna stop that. And if we go into the render settings, the way to increase the displacement quality is to go into performance settings and actually lower this value. Some of you may have already seen this in some of my other tutorials. Ooh, that's looking cool. Okay, so, you know, it's not the most beautiful rock I've ever seen in my life. Um, but again, guys, procedural fully works inside of Corona. Um, and the way I built this was kind of a parametric way. Um, so I could just change the seed value here and I get a new rock. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we'll render that real quick. And if we look here, we look at my cores here, you can see all cores are being utilized, um, which actually there's 64 threads because uh, the AMD hyper threading equivalent, I forget what it's called, is, is working as well. So anyway, there you go, guys. It's already gotten to 100 passes or 88, almost 100, which is like very high, super clean, um, very simple scene, but I hope you guys are kind of getting the idea as to how fast this is. So I have a, another little simple scene here, this uh, NSX model that I got off of TurboSquid, I believe. And let's see here, I'm just gonna update this and this is working. And look at that, look at that. We have a full, full preview here of this scene. And this is a HDRI from uh, my Epic Sky pack. If you guys haven't seen that, definitely check that out. And what else? What else have we got here? I don't know, guys. This is just so fast. I can't even handle it. Um, output. Let's do a quick test render of this guy. A little higher re resolution. Let's go. Let's go 25. Actually, let's go 35. And let's enable denoising. Let's just see what we get. Let's just see what we get here. And I'm gonna just delete these images out of here. You'll notice too that the IPR up actually is kind of working in conjunction with Cinema's Picture Viewer. And every time you re-enable the IPR from here, you you get a you get kind of a that image gets copied over to the uh, Picture Viewer. So 20. Let's see here. Uh, 30. It's almost there. Almost done and denoising and boom and that is literally 100 percent clean and we can go in here to our wonderful amazing uh, built-in post-processing effects that ship with corona we can just do some quick stuff here now you guys probably have seen a lot of this with my other tutorials but this is really i i'm really just trying to show off how darn fast um this silly render engine is um, exposure control here, very nice. Um, yeah, you guys have all seen this before if you've seen my other videos. But yeah, guys, um, it's that easy. All you gotta do is go get yourself a 32 core processor, which for only being $1,800, might sound like a lot of money to people, but for a processor with this kind of speed, I mean, 
it's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy that, that you can get this kind of speed uh, in 2018 for not very much money uh, from a CPU with no limitations um, when it comes to 3D rendering. I'll do another quick thing here. Um, let's throw in a camera just to show you guys that hair is working. So if I go up here to simulate hair objects, add hair, get some gravity on this hair, boom, boom, boom. Corona, and we just go hair material, and we plop this guy onto the hair object, and let's fire up the IPR. And it's got a much higher resolution thing going on here, but I'm gonna minus, I'm gonna subtract the exposure, something like that. And uh, yeah, you guys can see how that's working. I'll bring in a ground plane here, and let's take our hairball, put it up here. Let's scale it down. Let's redo that hair. Woo! Hair is always fun. Um, I'm gonna make this really big. And yeah, we'll just do another quick render. Um, corona. I just want to lower the the output resolution here. It's a little high for 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 uh, demoing here on the on the YouTube. Um, yeah, camera, cameras. We're getting, we're getting some some kind of flashing there. Like the exposure is not updating, but but that's cool. Um, move this around. We, I would probably help if I hit the play button here. Let's see what kind of feedback we get here. Woo we might crash this thing. Nah, it's not gonna crash. It's very stable now. It's incredibly stable, but. Uh, I just want to get some nice motion here on the hair. Good enough. Um, so if I also go into the hair material here, this is where we can uh, procedurally add, you know, frizz, stuff like that. Um, so that's all fully, fully working. And yeah, guys, and if you haven't seen um, some of Corona's hair uh, features, it's it's crazy, the, the hair. Um, the hair shader they developed is stunning. I don't. There was a, a good little example of it on the forums, but uh, but yeah, guys. Now I'm just rambling. And uh, anyway, guys, I think I would highly recommend checking out Corona Render for Cinema 4D Beta 2 Release Candidate One. It's free. You can just go download it right here, install it. It's com fully fully compatible with R20. And yeah, guys, check it out. Also, go get yourself a nice uh, 32 core processor, and you'll be uh, you'll be just having a, a grand old time with Corona Render inside of Cinema 4D. So uh, yeah, we will see you guys soon um, with an actual tutorial where I'm going to show you guys how to do some things. Awesome.